Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's me again, your old pal Zach. And before we dive right into this week's episode, I wanted to take a minute to highlight one of my favorite planets in the Pact Worlds, Akaton. Over the last few months, we've made several visits to Akaton in our flashback sequences, and the more astute of you may have caught that both Ziva and Orin were on planet at the same time years ago, unbeknownst to each other. So, you may be wondering, what's the deal with this bad boy? Well, I'm glad you asked, dear listener. Allow me to elaborate. Akaton is the third planet from the Pact World's sun, or fourth if we're counting Absalom Station floating in place of Lost Galarian, and is often called the Red Planet due to its iron-rich rocky surface giving it a distinctive red hue. It's about half the size of Galarian, with about a third of the gravity. Its core has cooled considerably over tens of millions of years, tectonic activity eventually slowing down and solar winds blowing away much of the atmosphere, freezing the water into expansive polar ice caps called the Winterlands, some of them miles thick, with the rest of the planet transformed into immense trenches, salt flats, and lifeless plains. The largest canyon is called the Adeo Rift, and it spans nearly the full diameter of the planet. Dust storms are common in the flats, and freezing winds form into tornadoes that tear through the winterlands. Millions of years ago, a large meteorite slammed into Akaton at a shallow angle, creating the Irconian Sea and killing off most of the megafauna. But today, Akaton's barren surface supports various species of cacti, grasses, and shrubs whose roots can dig up to a hundred feet down into aquifers. The native humanoid species include the Yasoki, the Akeshti, the Contemplatives, and the hulking four-armed Shobods. Within the crust of Akaton are immense veins of Thesteron, or Thasteron, I don't know, a substance vital to the production of starship fuel. The rise of space travel began a centuries-long Thesteron boom, and businesses and immigrants came to Akaton, bringing their wealth with them. However, when Triune revealed secrets of drift travel to the galaxy, the demand for Thesteron plummeted. In a few short decades, the Theron mining industries crashed, with costs outweighing profits. Only the purest and most accessible veins are being mined today. After several centuries, the economy stabilized, but is a mere shadow of what it used to be. Today, Akaton has no central government. Most of the planet is lawless, except for a few city-states. Since most of the oligarchs in charge of their governments prefer to fight over resources, hiring mercenaries to perform covert operations against each other instead of spending money to fight crime and enforce regulations, Akaton is a hotbed for organized crime and smuggling. Although slavery is only openly legal in a few cities, large slave markets for gladiators and workers exist. Most of the corrupt governments offer bounties on slavers' heads while also accepting bribes from them to look the other way. Scattered across the planet's surface lie the wrecked hulls of hundreds of massive starships, all crashed around the same time during the gap, suggesting that some large-scale battle once took place in orbit and across the surface, earning Akaton another nickname, the Battlefield. You can find all this info and more in the Pact World's Guide, so be sure to check it out. Akaton makes a great setting for a space western, and with that in mind, we're excited to present episode 65, No Rest for the Conflicted. guys are gonna have to find something else to give me shit about 
because I finally watched 2001. Oh, fuck hey, yeah, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Only a you. year after you I'm started so GMing a sci fi <laughs> game. Right. But yep. no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, man. I mean, did you enjoy it? I know it's a slow burn. No, I, I mean, I loved it. Of course I loved it. I mean, it's... I mean, it's, it's no baby's day out, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, of, of course it was a great film, you know? I was never unaware of that fact. I'm glad that I finally had some time to sit down and watch it and be able to focus on it. Because, hell, I yeah. wasn't doing anything else, you know? That's for sure. Yeah. That third and, act uh, gets wild as fuck. Oh, man, dude. The third act, it comes like... A full-on acid trip. Yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. I mean, There's, like, no dialogue for 20 minutes. Well, I mean, yeah. literally intentionally used, like, the, you know, the, the like, big visual sequence, the, the acid trip sequence? Mm -hmm. Like, this was made in 1968, and, like, they literally, for that, like, watched a bunch of, you know, like, Grateful Dead videos and shit to learn how they did their acid video effects nice well i mean yeah it was really good i mean i don't think it would translate well into a starfinder campaign well that all. was never the point it was just like a rite of passage kind of thing yeah for sure it was definitely a movie that there's no reason that i shouldn't have seen i like stanley kubrick i like science fiction you know i've seen quite a few science fiction Movies, there's just no, it just kind of missed me, I guess. Um, well, but and, because I've taken that away, I'm gonna give you guys something else that you can give me shit about. You ready? I mean, okay. I don't know if you giving it to us really makes it as shut up, Josh. shut up. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, you know, you're th that's Josh for you. Like, I would expected no other response to this <laughs> silver platter that I'm putting on All right, the table. Here. Lay, lay it on me, man. Um, I also have never. Watch Battlestar Galactica. Oh, well, I knew as, that. As a, as a sci-fi oh, GM, same, same. you know, I know that so, that you knew that. We talked about yeah. it yesterday, but like now, everybody else, you and listeners, can also give knows. yeah, you can give me shit too that I'm also running a sci-fi game without the Battlestar Galactica requisite knowledge. Well, However, you're like caught up on the expanse or pretty close to, oh, right? Absolutely. So yeah. I think that forgives that. Oh uh, yeah. Battle no, stars up. No, there's a lot. It doesn't mm. forgive it, but it's good. It's good to well, have. Well, I have to say that because I also haven't seen Battle Stars. <laughs> yeah, but that's so. not a surprise <laughs> yeah, okay. by any means. <laughs> uh, Adam, I, I will say, like, I know I, I, I was the champion of giving you shit about um 2001 a space odyssey because it's one of my all-time favorite films but i also do recognize that a, a decent part of what took you so long is i know that you had been initially we planned on me and you were going to go watch it in theaters when mm -hmm. it was it was in theaters in hattiesburg right. and we missed it and then it came back around in theaters but we just couldn't work out the scheduling so me and our my friend our friend will went and watched it and that kind of rejuvenated the shitting on you aspect because we had such a good time watching it in the theaters right. with like, it was just me and him and like one old guy. You know? oh, wow. It was, it was he really had never watched it either. Right. <laughs> yeah. He had never seen yeah. it. And he, and, and will, uh, really surprised me by how much he seemed to enjoy watching the film. Oh, John, oh, well. I thought you were talking about the old guy. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no the old guy. We were in yeah, the that very... was actually me in the back, <laughs> just watching the two of I, you dude, creepily. I would be so mad. But, like, no, it was me and Will were in the very back and just, like, vaping the whole time. Because, like, there's three people in this movie theater. Who cares? We're going to live our best <laughs> life. But the, the old guy was, like, almost direct center of the movie theater. Like, halfway up, halfway across the row, just by his fucking self. And I was just like, this guy knows what's up. Like he, he knows how to do. He's this. living his best life. Yeah, yeah. but For sure. I, I, you know, I'm glad that you did finally watch it. I gave you a lot of shit, but um, with the Battlestar thing, I mean, you know, me, John, and um, Josh are all really big Battlestar fans, mm -hmm. and it's on Sci-Fi their website for free mm -hmm. right now. So yes. I've actually been rewatching. I'm like ten episodes into the first season, and really enjoying it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna he, give it another shot. I did try it once. Get past he, episode. Didn't 15. we watch Battlestar? Or it, I well, it was mostly me and Dane, but we may have gotten you in on it as well for a while. 
Um, mm, me and Dane I, I watched, watched the whole, whole thing together. with someone. No. Like, yeah, well, John. it was probably with us. It's when Dane lived with John back in the day. Or, yeah. or and then lived with Brassfield, remember? John, yeah. what episode is it that I'm supposed to get past? Because I need to know that information. Oh, I'm no, gonna... no. There's not anything specific about episode 15. It's just what I heard that that's where uh, Adam stopped was around uh, 15 episodes. Uh, I thought there was like. If you can get past this, you you're you're hitting the, no. the goal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, there's, no, that's there's no hurdle. That's yeah. that's accurate, John. Is like well, I think it was more like ten than fifty. I don't know, but I got you know at least ten episodes in, and there wasn't anything like particular about episode whatever it was that I quit. I just lost interest and watched other things. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I'll give it another shot. Give it another go yeah. at some point. Yeah. Well, and for both of you that haven't seen it, like, like, you know, like John said, there's not like a turning point episode or whatever, but Emily, especially like if you haven't seen it, just watch the pilot, which the pilot is two, it's two movies, basically it's two hour and a half episodes and just watch that. And if you like those, then you'll like the show. I think the pilots, you could watch those alone and really get a lot out of it even if you didn't continue the show yeah i mean as a standalone those two pilot episodes are fantastic yeah okay i'm about and people shit on them for being slow burns but that's because people have no patience in this day and age well speaking of no patience i'm ready to get to this (laughs) game Uh, well (laughs) congratulations on finally living up to your potential (laughs) i did it i'm now officially my top form hey cheers yeah Congratulations. Congratulations. Cheers. 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 Chamomile cheers. <laughs> um, all right. At the end of last episode, you guys had gotten to your first lab, your first like um, secret research lab, and handled the two Aslanti Aeon robot, you know, battle bots that were there. Um, it was a pretty kind of intense fight, but not too. I mean, you guys handled it with you know pretty well um and here you are in the lab immediately after taking care of the security here so what do we do now yeah if i recall uh ziva kind of got her ass handed to her and, and then saved she and then saved. saved yeah and yeah mike and ziva kissed right uh, no. ac- according no to uh What's that guy, Mike, Mike Tyson? Tyson? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's that guy? I'm so disappointed in you. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no. I'm on drugs. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it ended with, yeah, like Mike um, really took the brunt of a big explosion for you and protected you from. Yeah, shielded like, Put his arms around you against a wall and took all the shrapnel from a grenade to his own back and then. It, in a tender moment, like put his forehead to your forehead. No, it was the uh, the bot self destructing, not a grenade. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. auto destruct or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so I mm-hmm. also believe that Oren was going to rush over and try yes. to administer some aid. That is correct. Yeah. So yeah. Oren zibity zooed over. Um, and Adam will see at us. Yeah. Before I could get the roll. Yeah, so, Ooh, yeah, I'm I'm okay. willing. I'm I'm. You still you still about it? You I'm still, about okay. it, man. Or like what? You know, you tell me. I'm hot to try it. Come on, yeah. let's get some of them um, heels. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, this will be uh, a level two uh, mystic cure. Oh. You know, or it'll just start channeling some of his cosmic energy um, as he lays hands on Ziva here. So that's gonna be a nice three d eight plus oh, that's, wisdom. That's nice. I have an important question. Bad. Do these heels also like fix like cosmetic injuries, like as in my outfit? I can token spell that if it's, oh, okay, if thank it's God. a problem. Okay. You just let me you just let me know afterward, you know what I mean? Okay. Priorities. Alright, so Oren's gonna roll three D eight uh, plus five. So that's eight, two and three. So uh eighteen. Eighteen HP. Uh that uh yeah, we'll just channel a little bit of that into you. You all right, Captain? And she's... Yes, thank you, Oren. Thank you, Mikhail. I um, I that was a a tough little tin can, wasn't it? Speaking of which, Zeno, everybody, everybody, okay? 
Sedona, is she still flying? Uh, no, she's oh, okay. settled down. <laughs> yeah, but the gun is still bouncing still randomly around. Again, around again, not touching it, not touching <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, so, Sidona, can you maybe like maybe make this gun stop uh, ricocheting this situation? Oh, yes, my, I'm sorry. Captain, she, uh, she uh, returns it, it to, to her be hand. She's got, a, like, like, she's got to fix it or something, right? Yes, it needs to be yeah. repaired. Yeah. Captain, I think we need to get you back. Take a rest. I... Uh, I, um, We're running out of time. Uh, yes, but maybe before we go, we, we cleared out the space. Maybe we take a quick look. Uh, she says as she stumbles to her feet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. you we greedy already, we motherfucker! This place, no, right? you have no, not at no. All. We just you like you haven't got the information that you came for here. You don't even yeah. know what they were doing here. Yeah, yet. we don't even yeah, know which downstairs. lab this is technically. Went downstairs, yeah, okay, fought the bots, right. and then that was that. All right, well, scan the room, fellas. I'm going to take a breath. Yeah. All right, so, I mean, I think we're going to go back downstairs. Right, yeah, we're just going to explore yeah, downstairs. Yeah, we're going to go back down the stairs, yeah. you know. Phil wants like, to poke around this thing up top, uh, see if there's any type of checks I could do to see you, what it's... So you you did checks all on this before, right. and there there was nothing that could be determined... From up on this level, okay. You guys thoroughly did engineering checks and perception checks on this whole thing, right? And uh, couldn't glean any information. But Oren, are we? I'm, sure I'm going down there the as well. Oren, who I'm sure would have told the party, uh, <laughs> yeah, at this, I'm sure at some point, is that the computer and controls are clearly down below. For sure. So yeah, yeah. he's we, down there. I mean, everybody, he, yeah, he was following. Come on, yep, following in tow. All right, Mike. I sh- uh, sure. I assume you're going down there too. Uh, sure. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> She's gonna stay upstairs, man. Just chill. I mean, I already did my job, <laughs> but I'll follow you guys. <laughs> yeah, I- I'm coming. Um. Okay. So you know, computers checks. However, you guys want to handle them. Your. Uh, give me give me some aid, boys. Yeah. I-, I can I can assist. <laughs> Can can you aid remote hacks? Yeah, I, I don't mean, think you know so. what. I don't yeah, think so. I, don't I think we think ruled you before that yeah. you can't because only you can remote hack. So how can they yeah, aid yeah. you remote yeah. hack? Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing great. So then I'm gonna go up and <laughs> physically do it. Okay. So everybody can aid. I, I aid. Okay. So you got an aid from the captain. What about you, Zeno? Did you aid? I feel like Xeno auto aids at this point, maybe. Yes, yes, I did actually. Yeah, I. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, well, that is an eighteen on the die. Okay. So, so two two aids plus your bonus. So, so that'd be twenty two plus seventeen. So we're looking at a thirty nine. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Um, so you kind of get kind of pull up some of the um, test reports and some of the scientist logs that have been um, tracked here and you get the general idea that what they were doing here was testing the stability of um, faster than light travel. Uh, because they don't know exactly how the rune drive actually works or achieves its speed, you can see that they've been running all sorts of different trials and scenarios, and not all of which are actually safe. Um, so they put, they, they're putting the parameters in this computer console down here and then closing the hatch to protect themselves from whatever's going on in the lab above while watching it. And they have been using prisoners to test it. Um, when all of those died, they started using these battle robots that you just took down mm-hmm. as test subjects. Um, but you can see that the scientists are getting frustrated because they aren't really getting applicable data about how you know, biological or carbon-based life forms would react in this. Um, mm. But there, you can 
get the sense, roll sense motive, whoever wants to. I will do it. I, I, I can do that. I have, I have that skill. Yeah. That helps. Uh, 27. Okay. Sense motive. Ziva? Um, you did better than me, because I got a 24. Uh, okay, well, you guys both are, like, kind of at the same time, maybe even looking at each other like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Get, the, get this sense <laughs> that kind of the, the language of the robots, you can tell that, or not the robots, I'm sorry, the scientists, um, starts to get more and more reluctant um, mm. because you can only assume that... Well, if they're not going to use these robots, who are they going to use yeah. to test this? You know, yeah. Yeah. and so they've been trying hard to find more tests to do on the robots. <laughs> you know, uh, oh, because they're worried they're going to get like yeah. one right, at a time, right, yeah. right, right, sacrificed. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Right. I just like keep thinking of like an animal testing facility and imagine the robots have like lipstick smeared on them and stuff. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, you are able to download all this data into not only your data pad, but into the control harness data pad that you got from Dr. Oliviana. Nice. Um, and so you now have the information needed from the field stability lab. Hell yeah. Check that one off the list. Okay. Sweet. Okay. All right. Well, you guys ready to tunker down? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I feel pretty great. Yeah. The Ziva captain gives looks so the, good, the though. hardest, like stankiest <laughs> side eye. Like, well, Phil, I'm so glad that you are feeling so froggy. Maybe you can carry me back to the, well, the scientist lab. I don't know, Cap. I, th- <laughs> I think uh, I think you got a little bit of resolve left in you. If I had to put a number on it, that'd say like like two, maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> is is this how the party fractures? Are we, are we about the civil war? Yep. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, Ziva's like, ha ha ha, funny, but for real, can we go lay down for a minute? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's for the best. Uh, all right, so. So we're going to try to like sneakily get back, right? Like, I mean, yeah, I think we should uh, at least be really. Really low key about it. You know, moving perfectly empty, empty container right there. What was that, John? I was saying there's a perfectly empty container right there. Let's just all go right in there. <laughs> Be all right. Close the hatch. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep in the bullet train. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I do have a question, though. That seems not like the smartest thing to me, like the smartest setup. Like, you've got this big, huge thing directly above you. You know right? I mean? like, yeah. I get that there's blast doors, but that just seems silly to me. Well, but. it'd be it'd be safer to have it un like you be underneath it than above it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you're like in a bunker thing, any explosions, you're safe from it I under guess. it rather than stuff like spraying out into I, your. I'm also not an engineer and <laughs> or very smart with that stuff. So there we go. <laughs> That's my commentary on that. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> Got Killing it. it. Uh, all right. So you guys make your way back to the main hub of the lower part of Arello Station. Um, and one thing I'll tell you is that all the bodies have been pulled away. They're oh. no longer there. Cleaning bots. <laughs> Santa drones doing his work. Santa drones. Drones. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's Aereo. Well, yeah, 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 it probably is Aereo. I was actually thinking the little uh, things that look like toasters from Star Wars that like <laughs> scramble around <laughs> clean and stuff. I just imagine them like coming by with like a broom and just like, oh, hey. <laughs> a whole cool swarm drive. Yeah, just like yeah. vaporizing. Them <laughs> Man, you just, like, need, you just need <laughs> some sardine oil and a tiger. Dude. <laughs> 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 Take care of that for you real quick. Um, all right. So, so, you know, you make your way to back to the T intersection and you see the course to the north is another long hallway that goes off into darkness or longer than you can see the end of and same to the south. But you see nobody on the catwalk that's 
over the rune drive. Um, you see nobody in the halls as you're kind of just, you know, very quietly walking through there. And then you get down to the main hall that goes past the security room. You find nothing. You go past where you got ambushed. Nothing. And then you go to the vehicle bay and there is a loader in there. I need everybody to roll perception. Hell yeah. Oh Real my quick. God. <laughs> my let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Loader. Anybody else having like flashbacks here? Like, <laughs> I have seen Ooh. this one before. No, th- there, there's nothing there. You guys don't actually have I'll roll a 26. Are you serious? I'll roll a 26. I'll roll a 26. I'll roll a 26. I'll roll a I'll check out this loader again. I rolled an 18. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very low. It's it's still guys, would require it's, uh, one to four hours of work to get functioning. Again. <laughs> guys, it's it's, uh, it's, uh, it's still uh, it's still a loader. It's 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 there. Well, sometimes think, things I can mean, change. I don't know. I need to go check it out for myself, Phil. <laughs> it's right. a keen observation, Phil. <laughs> well does done. It, does it help at all that I rolled a twenty six? <laughs> no. <laughs> Worth shot. That's you know? like your Where best you perception in? roll ever. Can we can we use that for traps to see if this specialist? Oh my gosh! I mean, it's definitely that that whole room is trap free for sure. And then you get back on the elevator, back up into the flight control lab, <laughs> back out those doors. This is that tiny little phone booth room where you guys had the phone booth fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You go down. And the the catwalk toilet. stairs, uh, and that's all cleaned up. Although there is still a hole, or you know, a section of the stairs missing. Um, and you make your way all the way <laughs> across into the power reactor room to get on the ele- other elevator that takes you back down to the scientist dormitories. And you come across nobody along the way. The halls are eerily empty and silent. Um, well, we, we have done a fair bit of killing, to be fair, you know. Yeah, you've, you've definitely done the work. <laughs> um, so you find yourself back in the more shallow descent to the scientist dormitories. All right. Uh, we post and watch or what? I. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll take first watch. I still feel fine. Well, the, well, then you'll take the whole watch, then. I'd like, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get my one resolve point back, if possible. Sorry. <laughs> one resolve. <laughs> um, uh, Timeline-wise, I don't know that we could do... Uh, we, we, we don't have the time, do we? Like, What's that? For a multi-shift situation. This is like... You've got eight hours. Exactly. So... Yeah. Um, but uh, there's also Santa Drone <laughs> slash Erio and Mergleburr up yeah. in the lounge. You know that they're here on this level. You know? And you've also learned in your travels that there's no cameras on the scientist's dormitory level and that they're working 12-hour shifts, you know... Yeah. In that it'll be eight hours before their shift is over, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you could still put up a watch. You never know. You do know. I mean, there's a Vandrian is on the loose here. You know what I mean? That's the one I'm mostly worried about. So yeah. I mean, as far as that, like the thing is, it takes eight hours to get any benefits at all from a long rest, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, so it, any rotation at all. Yeah, exactly. It's we impossible. Can't, we can't do a rotation. If somebody's going to watch, one of our crew is going to watch, they will not get the benefits. Yeah, of so rest. have Ariel and Mergleburr. Exactly. They yeah. watch. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So as we kind of enter, uh, Ziva will kind of come up, and we we see them at the, the head of the, in the lounge, Yeah, they're, right? they're in the lounge, yep. Yeah, we'll just come up and check on them super quick. Uh before. Hello, it's good to see that you're still <laughs> breathing. There it is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Have you discovered any information f- about the rune drive that we could consolidate and that I could put this puzzle together finally? Uh, I mean, we got a little bit of something for you. Uh, and he hands him the, the data pad that has the information on it to peruse. 
Oh, you have found that haughty woman's data pad. <laughs> and no, I do not mean attractive, Fell. Oh, Although, did you think that she was attractive? I'm mm. curious if my assessment of human aesthetic is correct. Uh, I mean... Yeah, Fell, what'd you think of her? I... <laughs> yeah. She's, she's, uh... Yeah, she's all right, yeah. I guess. For, yes, for Fel, you're, Fel, you're correct. Into the, into the <laughs> Piscine she, varieties. She's a terrible, despicable humanoid creature. She's a human, but yes, you're right. She was kind of cute. She's but you're quite more into <laughs> cephalopods, correct? Oh, that is good to know. I will put it in my notes. Thank she, you for this <laughs> research. She was attractive in that, like, caring kind of way, you know? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I do not understand. <laughs> what do you mean? Karen, no, hey, kind of right, we, After listen. the rest, I'll explain it to you. Right? I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, in speaking of, of our rest, I, I have a question. Didn't didn't we run across at some point um, one of those, uh, like, battery chargers? Like There's one, one here, yeah. There's one here. So okay. you can certainly nice. recharge all your batteries. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going to recharge all my batteries while I'm asleep and then reload not only my Corona laser cannon, but also uh, the prison gauntlet from my dad. Nice. Uh, well, that that is not going to be able to be recharged in a normal recharge station because it, it's like it was fabricated, kind okay. of. Do I throw it away, Je- Adam? No, is that no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's just not finished. You know what I mean? It needs to be developed more to have like that kind of rechargeability, okay. you know. So, so you're taking it away from me. <laughs> uh, Irio says, "It is good to see you. I am starting to get my old personality back." And okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> y'all. I what is it, Ziva? <laughs> for the listeners, y'all. So I wish this is one of those instances that I really wish that we all played like it face to face because Adam's Erio is just like he kind of cocks back and he gets real smarmy and <laughs> yeah. like he's got this smirk and it's really fun over video but it would just be so much better in person but I'm so sorry I just had to like just say thank you for being yeah. so animated you you do yeah. sound. Like you've gotten back to your dapper old ways a bit. Oh, yes. It feels so much better to be myself again. Um, it's good to see that you are still here standing as well. Uh, Murgleburg and I have been catching up and still can't quite get over the coincidence of both myself and your father and Sedona and all of you people here in this place. Murgable thinks that it might be... I'm sorry, Murgle Burr thinks that it might be something to do with the rune drive itself. Uh, some <laughs> kind of, like, destiny engine, right? What, what? Some kind of, like, destiny engine. It weaves fate around it. I'm sorry, yes, I've been hanging think, out with Xeno No, too much. that's actually quite a succinct description of my hypothesis. I do think that it has some sort of strange reality bending properties. Oh, nice! I could you could almost say I was in, inspired by your your <laughs> presence here. <laughs> T- uh, well, you can take a gold star, Titanium Mike. <laughs> you have done very well in class today. Just stick it uh, on his armor. <laughs> She <laughs> of like sticker stars, yeah. uh, and of course <laughs> you can take an inspiration. Yeah, oh, that, that gold star yeah. will look good on my black and gold armor. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This further cements my views on human aesthetic. <laughs> But you're not human, so never mind. (laughs) Humanoid? He's humanoid. Yeah, he's humanoid. Yeah. I guess, by by a very big stretch there. Yeah, and the. What'd you get? 
Uh, it, there's no message or anything, but I got a Jairspiration from uh, Jairspiration. J- Jairus from Tigard, Oregon. Tigard, Tigard, Tiger King, Oregon. <laughs> to guard. To guard. Actually, guard. I'm the to guard king. Let us know. Let us know, Jairus. Twigall. I'm the hipster tiger king <laughs> like from Portland, Oregon. To God. <laughs> no, we okay. love Oregon, I'm sure. Yeah, so I do love beautiful Oregon. Country. Beautiful country. Well, I mean, I've never been to that particular region of the country, and I'm still salty about it because I was going to go to Washington nearby for mm-hmm. <sighs> Pinocon. Oh, yeah, for that. Get out of here with that. <laughs> okay. Too soon, Adam. So, so Too as we. Soon. As we settle down, I'm going you know, to hook up you know, my batteries to charge and stuff. I'm going to tuck in Ziva, give her a kiss on the forehead. So <laughs> good night, made it through it. <laughs> good, good night, This relationship, <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's funny. I, I, I recently listened to some of the early episodes during, during the quarantine time, and um, it's really funny how Mike and Ziva like, started their interactions. You know, there, was, there was a little like early tension between the two, you know? Um, but now they're like besties tucking each other in. Anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's interesting because she's like the mom of the group, but like he, particularly with her and and Zeno, I guess, has like a kind of paternal protectiveness, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because she's you know um, the easiest person in the party to kill. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly because of my choices, but ain't that life? Uh, please go on, Adam. <laughs> well, I think you all go to bed with this on your mind, I guess. You know, uh, I made some bad choices, and that's how I found myself sleeping in a scientist bed that's not my own in a remote comet somewhere in Atlantis star, sp- star space. Z- what did I do like, to get here? Z- Z- Being like tucked in average by a giant Tuesday, lizard. just an <laughs> average Tuesday. It's that dang um, old rune drive basking. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> So I do think certainly the rune drives on most of y'all's minds when when you go to, mm. to rest. And of course, Murgleburg and Irio agree to stand watch to make sure that nobody comes or to wake you up if somebody does. I don't. I don't think the rune drives so much on my mind, but well, yes, yeah, so you've got your father on your mind. Yeah. But I mean, it's still got to be somewhere in your thoughts being tied up with all of this too, you know, as he is, it's just kind of been theorized that perhaps that the rune drive is why you're here to, with your dad. You yeah. Know? I mean, definitely, but it's much more like, uh, the dad thing is a panic. Whereas the, you know, the rune drive thing is more of a, like something he can think about in more measured ways, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Well, Everybody's asleep, getting getting much needed rest, and Orin wakes up with a start. Here we go. <laughs> Orin awakes with a start. The room is spinning. His head pounding. Drenched in sweat, he turns to face the other side of the bed, only to find that Evelyn and all traces of her are gone. From the light peeking through the motel window and the dogs barking outside, he can tell it's still early in the morning. He looks to the goblet on the nightstand. Despite his hazy vision, he sees traces of some powder residue in the dredges of his wine. He stands up, unsteady as the room swirls around him, and tries to piece together what happened. Did Ev poison me? She want to leave me? No, she she could have done that when she went to get food. Uh, poison wasn't lethal, so she didn't want to kill me, but she just wanted me knocked out. But why? Oren pulls up his comm unit. No messages, no missed calls. He immediately tries to contact Evelyn. Nothing. Disconnected frequency. Oren paces the room, turning the last few hours, days, 
months over in his head. Why would she do this? What does she want me out of the way for? What do I really know about her? She said she was here on a job. Hmm. They had made an agreement not to discuss their work, but now... Now Oren wishes he knew more. Frustrated and without answers, Oren hastily gathers his things, barely grabbing his boots and gun belt before heading out the door toward his ship. Wondering if their whole romance wasn't just some long con to steal the Sierra Scout. He knows that doesn't even make sense, but Orin has to check off all of his boxes. Even before he approaches the hangar, he knows it's there. If Evelyn had wanted his ship, she'd have had plenty of opportunities to take off with it before now. However, when he arrives, he notices that the tarp he was using to keep the Abadar Corp logo hidden, be hidden had been removed and lay in a heap on the hangar floor. Someone had been here, and Orrin suspects he already knows who. No signs of entry into the scout's cockpit or the cargo bay, but again, there probably wouldn't be. He opens the ship's door to an empty bay, the harness used to secure his most recent delivery still outlining the shape of the prototype fuel extractor. At that moment, a sickening realization washes over Orin, and all the pieces click together. God damn it, she's after the prototype. The poison is still coursing through his system, and he starts to feel nauseous. He steadies himself and tries to think things through. Abadar Corp had already been paid for the delivery after all, and he could just head back up to the copper and play dumb. She might not even recover the fuel extractor. If she does though, she could be in danger. Sure, some mass-printed drill bits would be an easy write-off for the corpos, but this was a prototype, and the suits would demand blood. A team would inevitably be sent to hunt her down, and Orn couldn't bear the thought of someone hurting Evelyn. What if this is all just some misunderstanding? He decides to find her himself. He couldn't be that far behind, and if she left the hangar empty-handed, the mines would be the only place left to go. Oren takes a seat in the cockpit and fires up the engines. He starts to taxi out of the hangar, aggressively honking at the attendant trying to flag him down, presumably for disembarking without proper clearance, their arms flailing hopelessly as Oren swerves the ship just enough to avoid direct contact. Get out of the way, you damn bureaucrat! The Sierra Scout comes zooming out of the hangar, barreling along Akaton's rocky red surface. Orin slams the throttle forward, and the engines glow hotter. A dusty wake follows the ship as it bounds full speed across the flats, to the edge of the Adeo Rift, where the mining operation is taking place. Orin stops the Scout just short of the entrance to the mine shaft, which runs all the way to the bottom of the canyon. He hops out of the ship as the turbines cycle down. The autopilot program still deploying the landing gear, only to be greeted by the sight of several dead miners near the shaft's entrance. Parked nearby is a sleek stealth vessel with several sets of footprints stamped in the dust heading towards the tunnel. He's too late. She's already here, and not alone, it seems. He unholsters his sidearm and hurries into the mine shaft, sighing to himself as he steps over the bodies strewn about the area. Orin descends further into the mine. The darkness is accompanied by an increasingly thick dust that chokes the air. He stifles a cough to avoid alerting the would-be thieves and gives himself a moment to let his ears work while his eyes adjust. Up ahead, around the bend of the shaft, he can hear the sounds of two men breathing hard and coughing from the motes in the air. As Orin's vision focuses, he can make out their shadows reaching long across the walls. Orin steps around the corner, priming the trigger as he swings his pistol up towards the unsuspecting men. Two blasts, two thuds, two dead. Deeper in, he encounters another thief, hunched over the body of a miner rummaging through his pockets. Orin takes the opportunity to air him out as well, for good measure. When he finally reaches the bottom of the dig site, Orin sees the prototype drill already strapped down to a mobile hover cart, ready for extraction with what appears to be several remote explosives attached to it. Standing in front of the machine is Evelyn, 
her intricately engraved lever-action rifle trained directly at him. With heartbreak and disappointment weighing heavily in her wet eyes. Aaron, why? Why don't you just leave, you stupid, stubborn man? This... This isn't your fight. Ev, what the hell is going on here? Why are you stealing the drill? Stealing it? No, Oren. I want to destroy it. Oren gestures to the drill loaded on the hovercart. Evelyn follows his gaze and continues. If I destroy it here, Oren, it would bring the entire mine down on our heads. That's not the point, though. This drill represents a direct threat to all of the packed worlds. It can drain entire planets of their resources from the inside out. The power to end civilizations, Oren. No corporation should have this kind of tech. I'm going to see to it that they don't. Come on, Ev. That's, that's not our problem. Walk away. We'll leave together. This payout will It'll be enough. We can find our own rock. Far away from this shit. Don't ever touch us. It's it's a lot of money, Ev. Please. Don't do this. I can't let you do this. He raises his sidearm. His breathing quickens as his heart pounds in his chest. Evelyn shoulders her rifle tightly and says, I- I'm sorry, Oren. The rifle's blast reverberates through the caves, and for a moment, before the muzzle flash blinds him, he thinks he sees a tear run down her perfect elven cheek. The bullets burn hot as it tears through his skin and out the other side, a flesh wound. Did she miss on purpose? A question that would haunt him for the rest of his days. He sidesteps, drawing down on her instinctively, muscle memory taking over before his brain can catch up to his trigger finger. His blaster reports and Evelyn falls limply to the floor, a cloud of dust stirring up around her as she lands. Evelyn, no! Oren rushes over to her side, dropping his pistol as he runs, his hands shaking in disbelief of what he's just done. He takes Evelyn in his arms, turning her to face him. Blood is seeping from the corner of her mouth and he can smell the singed flesh coming from a large wound in the center of her chest. <clears throat> nice shot. <clears throat> Cat boy, she says, barely conscious now. Oren picks her up, pulling her close to him, running as fast as he can. He carries her back up the tunnel. He reassures Evelyn that he'll get her help, that everything will be okay, that he loves her. He begs her to hang on, they're almost there. When he emerges from the mine, squinting against the sharp light on Acton's dusty red surface, he realizes his words have fallen on deaf ears. The most beautiful woman he has ever seen, the love of his life, lay dead in his arms. He drops to his knees and grips her body tightly, sobbing. He begs for her forgiveness, his cries echoing throughout the canyon. Between sorrowful moans, Arn hears a sound in the distance. He looks up and sees a shape in the sky, the copper carriage and his crew heading straight towards him. On its nose, the shining golden key of Abadar glistens in the hot desert sun. Resentment wells up in Oren's chest. He grits his teeth and reaches into Evelyn's satchel, producing the explosive's remote detonator. With a heavy sigh, he presses the button and shields Evelyn's body from the impending blast. The ground rumbles beneath him as tons of rock and sand explode out into the canyon and dusty red earth rains down around him, and Oren awakes with a start. So tasty. That was great. That was great. I loved it. I loved it. Probably my favorite. How many, how many Michelin stars was that worth? Oh, man. That was like... Five Michelin tires. <laughs> <laughs> the whole set and the spare. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. never going to make you a Michelin ever again. <laughs> I was going to say. Oh, my God. 
Well, oh. that's where that's mm. where. Well, there's the so tragedy good. we've all been waiting on. There See you, space cowboy. Damn. See you, space Cur- cowboy. Curse your sudden but inevitable tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So you well, yeah, I mean, or Orin wakes up, you know, with those thoughts really heavy on his mind, and he's just. And he'll start, you know. <laughs> Mike like, comes and checks on you, kisses you on the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you doing, Mike? Stop! Stop! <laughs> Jesus! You like kisses the tear away from your cheek. Yeah. Guess, guess I've got my dad on my mind. I'm just I'm trying to <laughs> trying to father the whole party. All right, now listen, man. I'm older than you. Okay. He even peeks around the corner. He gives good night night kisses. Uh, He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> not in the mood for it today, everybody. Yeah, well, I guess we are like contemporaries more than anything. Um, yeah, I think yeah. That. So, but you guys do get your long rest. Uh, what does your HP look like? Because you don't get full HP, but we can assume that Orin did any heals that needed to be done. Yeah, I had um, I had all of my level one heals and one yeah. more level two uh, heal. Uh, yeah, so you could have popped all uh, yeah. those off before going to bed to get everybody mm-hmm. close enough to get. So yeah, everybody max up. Sweet. Sweet. And y'all, you are about to go into like the last hours of book three here. <sighs> Yikes. Uh, can we, is this a safe, is this a safe point? No. Is this a safe point that we can come back to? Yeah, let's no. new save file. Yeah, all right. new save file. Okay. <laughs> all right, so, so okay. I'm going to reach up and slap the quick save real quick and miss yeah. it yeah. and quick load. Yeah. Back to book one. Let's go. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you guys got your rest. And as I said, you're in the final hours here. What are you going to do? Where? Are you? I mean, I know you were going back down, right? I'm going to go for the other lab. So let me take you back to that map. You basically have a, a A or B choice here. You know, you're going to go to the lab to the north, the lab well, in the which, north, or the lab in the south. <laughs> lab in the north. The lab in the lab north. The lab in the north. The lab, so, in, the north. lab in the north. So, so we do know, Do we, do we have we established yet if we know which no. lab is which? No, no. Topic okay, so it doesn't matter. We could flip a fucking coin. Yep. Yeah, I enjoyed our chance. So Ziva will say lab to the north. <laughs> lab to the north. <laughs> to the north. Lab in the north. Uh, okay, let's see. <laughs> so, all right, kids, <laughs> calm down. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Stop making all that noise. <laughs> all right. Why are you saying it that way? <laughs> I like this one. Or maybe we don't. Maybe or we maybe go, go to the one south. in the south. <laughs> yeah. maybe, you know maybe what? In south. second thought, it is a silly place. Let's not yeah. go there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, the well, lab in the north it is. Then. Lab in the north. <laughs> As right, we walk up, me... that's what it says in his landing. <laughs> just... Lebanon North. Lebanon like, North. One What's word. the marching order as you go down this long? Oh hall? goddamn! Oh goddamn! The same as it always yeah. is. Yeah, I know. Same but like it's well. well, no, front. That's, but it's, that's not fair. It's not always one way because no. that depends uh, on if we're trying to sneak or not. Yeah, for sure. That's in, in, in the exact opposite of our normal because I can't right. sneak. Where the fuck? Yeah, the androids would, will be in the back and we'll. Get our seizures in while y'all. Okay. <laughs> right. Are there any kind of locks on any of the doors? Right. There's there no wasn't d- one. There, uh, there, I mean, not. there's no doors where you are now, you know. So I was wanting you to get in marching order before you. So, I mean, are we, are we trying to send ahead it, sneaky boys or not? I guess is what. I'd say probably not. Is. We just, just go no, we're it. fully charged. We're just gonna march yeah. in there. We're just gonna be like, yeah. Right. Okay. So I mean, I think we will look. Current market is pretty good. You know, like we got Mike and Fell in the front, the heavily armored. Then we got Orin and Ziva in the middle, and Androids in the back. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think at this point, like now we've we got the rest that we needed and everything, but that's a lot of time that we spent, and we know we're running low on time. I think Mike would be getting increasingly like determined and like trying to hold back the panic of like we've got to get to 
my dad. Like, we have got to get this done before anything else happens here or something blows up, you know? He's yeah. he's not in a jokey mood right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, Orin isn't either. <laughs> he's uh, dealing okay. with some heavy shit. You make your way down the hall uh, and get to the lab door, and there is a sealed door. Now, uh, Josh, if you remember, you had felt unlock all the doors, uh-huh. but it's got a red light indicating that it is locked. Okay. Tail, tail slap. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I want to want to do a little looky loo. See what's uh, what's holding it shut. I know you said it's sealed, and then there's a little red red light showing it's locked. So it's a remote hack uh, or a control think, panel or something. Maybe upstairs. Um. Well, I think you're basically going to have to make an engineering check to unlock okay. it. You know what I'll, I mean? I'll, I'll aid you, but like as you do that, I kind of turn to you and like, would this be another one of them like blood locks? I mean, guess we'll find out, huh? All right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Zeno aids. Ooh, I don't aid. That sucks. Oof. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a seventeen and then nineteen after Zeno's aid. That sucks. Well, we got a two oh on the die. Oh, my God. Uh-oh. That's not That's not right. good at all. That's not Can good. Can I mulligan? No. <laughs> Everybody gets one. <laughs> um, does anybody else have engineering? I do, but I ate no. it. Yeah, yeah, we ate it. Mm-hmm. No, oh, so man. So Ziva and Orin, no engineering? No, no uh, engineering. No. Let me see if... Well, let me see if Sedona has some engineering. Oh yeah, the, the adventure's over, guys. We can't get yeah. through a fucking <laughs> no, door. We like, Man, right, we'll it's too bad we can't get south. past a sealed door. <laughs> Anybody got knock? <laughs> no, but I got a laser cannon. I'll shoot that motherfucker. Okay, okay so she does have, have engineering. So she's going to roll. Can we aid? You, well, you don't have engineering. No, you don't have engineering. Uh, those oh. who do, can they aid? No, they cannot. No, they've uh, already no. aided. Well, That's fucking right. stupid, and you all know it. All right. I, I agree. And it's like, <laughs> sorry, can't you know, aid you. I already adventure. helped. I right. already helped. I expended all of my knowledge. 19 on the die. Good. Okay. Get it, With girl. a plus 11 to engineering. Oh. Makes it a 30. <laughs> Door opens. Yeah, look at that. I don't know what happened but to Sedona. Sedona is going to have to be in the front. You're full of surprises, Sedona. And as it opens, the door opens, and you see. Oh, no. Twin metallic rings, 20 feet in diameter. These are the main focus of this large chamber. Halfway up these devices, at a height of 10 feet, a catwalk runs along each ring and curls around behind each of them, providing maintenance access. access. Yellow arrows painted upon a track and a ramp lead toward the northern ring, and a similar ramp and track are painted with series of arrows leading away from the southern ring. A small vehicle, similar to a single occupant escape pod on wheels, rests at the western end of the northern track. A pair of computer consoles sits on a raised dais between the two tracks, attached to a strange tank and a humming reactor. At this computer terminal, you see two beings and they are dressed in all white like kind of what looks like um, scientists jumpsuit suit right so they have like a turtleneck kind of up to their chin and a very skin tight white suit and a bow tie like Bill Nye the science guy themselves have long fingers and dark like slate blue skin mm. and on their in their heads as they turn towards you as the door opens have big black eyes they barely have a nose and a small little mouth and a huge forehead cranial grays there are two grays what? What? Right oh the shit. shit grays ooh mm. And, and they turn to you and they go, ah! All right. I'm sorry. They don't make any sound. You hear that in your brains. Oh. Uh, you hear what I said, 
but they don't actually make sound. It's t- telepathic communication. So they're still speaking mm. a language, but you, they didn't sing it, say it out loud. Mm. However, it is Aklo. 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 Okay. Aklo. Okay. Um, but I need everybody to roll initiative. And of course, as Sedona, Sedona opens the door, sees the grays, she immediately seizes out and God. collapses to the ground. This bitch. God, this is getting real we got old. got to <laughs> tape a fucking pillow to her head. We're going to have to force her into retirement after this. <laughs> Just sit uh, down. Yeah. And everybody roll that initiative. Let's see what we get. Uh, ooh, 16 for Oren. 16 for Oren. Also okay. a 16 for Zeno. Okay, what about Mike? 13. Okay, Fel? 7. Ziva? Don't worry, Fel, I got you with a 5. Yeah, ooh. making me not look bad. Man. I can't believe we're about to fight Grays. That's great. Never thought it's great. I'd ever fight Gray. <laughs> there he is. There, it is. there he no, is. Like too easy. Easy. You said it. I just put the it emphasis like there. Too easy. But that was what makes it good. <laughs> the only fruit Josh appreciates is low hanging fruit. Hey, man, it's the taste. I appreciate all kinds of fruit. <laughs> Leave that one alone. Those peaches in Animal Crossing, though. All right, so Dona is collapsed on the ground. Well, it looks like the grays. Actually, go first. No. <laughs> so I'm I'm sorry to clarify. I didn't understand what they said. Yeah, you can understand what they said. They basically were really irritated that you interrupted their studies, and they screamed at you. Said, "Kill the distractions." Oh, mm. they just killed. They just. Gave us kill the spare. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, as, so, as soon as they pop off, I didn't hear them, but I just immediately turn to the party. Like, keep one of them alive for questioning. <laughs> yes, yes indeed. Um, okay, so in the first round here, they are going to the southern one. What do we want to name these bad boys? Don't worry, not for critical purposes, but beefcake Francis. Beefcake and Francis. We've yes, done Francis has. before. Oh, we've, I like it, have though. I like the way it sounds. Beefcake and Francis. So Beefcake <laughs> is going to be the north one, and Francis is going to be the southern one. So Beefcake <laughs> is... <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> ...is going to use action to make old Mike roll a will save. Okay. Let's see. Mm. I'm no longer as shitty as I used to be at will saves, so that's good. <laughs> You've leveled up. Uh, no, I have a ring. Ah. Uh, mm. <laughs> no. Well, how to do? Uh, sixteen. Sixteen is not enough. You okay. are under the effects of a hold person spell. The target becomes oh. paralyzed and freezes in place. You are aware and you can breathe normally, but you can't take any physical actions. Even speech. A held creature can't cast spells. Each round on its turn, the target can spend a full action to attempt a new saving throw to end this effect. This does not provoke effects of opportunity. Uh, If you were winged and flying, you would fall. And if Mm. you were swimming, you would drown. Um, Well, it's a tough life being the best. All right, so you (laughs) you are currently held. And um, the so Francis, that was Beefcake's turn. Francis is going to also make Fell roll a will save. All right. Oh man, that's a nineteen on the die. Gives me a twenty-three. Nope. Yeah, twenty-three. A twenty-three is a save. Yeah. And nice. they are both going to use their movement to. Move back. Thirty feet. So they come off the little dais and start moving towards the north of the room. That is their turn. Oren, you are up. So they're they're running right now. Huh? They're just moving out of being right like fully exposed in the middle of the room. Okay. How far away 
from me are they right now? Strategery. 60 feet. And you have two feet. paralyzed, fully armored people directly in front of you. Uh, Wait, what? I'm saved. not paralyzed. Fell, fell is fine. I have removed condition lesser, but that only removes shaken, sickened, or staggered. So that's not going to do anything for you there, Mikey. I'm checking uh, my inventory for... <laughs> Actually, you know what? I don't think any of those... No. Analgesics or <laughs> just make it worse. Fucking yeah. worthless. Sorry, I'm still bitter about that shit. <laughs> Can I just throw those at the grays? Yeah, just throw them down. I'll use them. I'll use them for, for telica. Uh, it's like a damage. kinetic hand. <laughs> there you go. Um. <clears throat> hmm. I guess Orin will just you know he'll run up. As far as he can. I mean, would I have a sh- if I get right here against the the west wall, just straight ahead, thirty feet, would that give me a clear shot? I'm not sure if this uh, this desk is elevated a little bit. It is, is that- elevated a little bit. You'll have a shot, but they are going to get a little cover. Okay. I think that's- you probably have a shot on the northern one on Beefcake. Oh, I got a clean shot on Beefcake. I think so. Yeah. Okay, so just thread the needle between the the desk and then that loader that they're mm-hmm. <laughs> that they're right by. All right, yeah. So Orin will just uh, shoulder Evelyn and uh, fire fire around. Ooh, natty seventeen on that. That's gonna be a twenty six to hit. Yeah, fuck them up. Twenty six to hit against KAC, my dude. That will hit. Yes, uh, 1d10 plus 6 damage. Alright. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm about that, man. Good, good stuff. Ooh, that's gonna be um, 12 damage. Ooh, not bad damage. Good shot yeah, there. Yeah, so, I mean, as they move, he just runs up. <laughs> Peppers one. Alright. Not bad. Xeno 5, what you gonna do? All right, so Zeno is going to also uh, uh, pace 30 feet ahead and draw as part of that move action. Okay. And uh, as a free action, he would like to uh, perform a life science check on these grays, which I think is very appropriate, being a scientist and all. And that is going to be... Let's see, life science is 14, 18 on the die. That is going to be a 32. Okay, that's pretty good. So first of all, I'm going to give you the handout so you can fully see what these things look Ooh. like. Oh, no, wow. Murderous intent. He's got a knife. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Scalpel. All right, so 30, 32 is pretty good. Um, you know that they are small humanoids. Uh, what do you want to know about? I would like to know about any special abilities or resistances. Um, all right. So they have no resistances. Um, they do have the phase defensive ability. Oh, um, all right. Give me deets. (laughs) Give me them deets on that phase. Uh, they exist slightly out of phase with the material plane. A gray can pass through walls or material material objects as long as it begins and ends its turn outside of any wall or obstacle. It- Wild, dude. So what a does cool that, ability. Does that mean that it is incorporeal? Oh, that shoot. I, I'm... Does they're not incorporeal, however, we should have done this for Oren's shot. Um, in addition, Grays always benefit from a 20% mischance against attacks and effects targeted directly, and they would only take half damage from no area effects. Oh shit! So let me uh roll, let's get that mischance. All right, right man, I'll so, a mischance. Sorry, good 21 or better. <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad. Oh no, they're all gonna die. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, 23. Mm, 23. 
Well, I'm going to yes. give you a minus three because you Bull. didn't remember this Dude, uh, no. ability. What? what? <laughs> yes, he, the GM. Excuse me? <laughs> uh, okay, but yeah, that's what you learned there, John. Pretty good roll. Good good learning. So what you going to do nice. with your turn? And I'm also going to fire. I'm going to fire with my az- azimuth laser rifle. So, okay. Let's see here. Okay, so you're right behind Warren. All right, Correct. So yeah, you definitely have... Um, it's going to be a block shot either way, but you can try it. You can certainly attempt. All to right. Okay. Have some cover. So let's see. Range attack is eight. Let's see. Six on the die. So that's going to be a uh, 14. Uh, let's roll that miss chance. All right. Well. Miss chance. Okay. So, so 86. Yes. Okay, all right, so you get the shot off, however, 14 is not enough to hit. <sighs> Damn it. Mike, you're up. Uh, I mean, so all I can full, do is try to break out. Yeah, full full round action to do a wheel save. Okay, that's an 18 on the die for a 24. That will do it. I break out? <laughs> you break out, <laughs> yep. Okay, so that's that's my standard action, but that's I can still full move. round action to do full that. Full round. Um, okay. All right. All right. Fell. Fell is going to move up a bit, and I'm actually going to do something that I haven't done before. Um, a an in combat wireless hack. Instead of doing combat tracking, my exocortex can get its own standard action separate from mine to wirelessly hack something within 20 feet of me. So I'm wanting to go ahead and have it start doing something with this uh, computer console that they were at uh, before just to see if it can feed me any information or have any type of security systems or anything, any way to assist us in combat. At the same time, I'm just going to shoot at them. So you can do all that in one time? The exocortex is doing that while I'm you know, shooting. So the move action is hacking it, but you don't necessarily get to process all that information. Right. Immediately. No, for sure. Right. Well, you already moved up. Then, no, it's so you? it's not a move action. It is a standard action that the exocortex does. And like on top of my other actions, it's not my, it's not fell standard action. It's the exocortex. So you're going to do a hack on the computer. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, let me get that computer's check okay. then. That's a six on the die for a 23. Uh, 23 is not enough to hack the computer. Okay. That's fine. I'm going I'm to shoot with my tri laser okay. and just a standard right. shot, not overcharged. Uh, it's another six. <laughs> Boo. So that's a. Oh, damn. Boo. Yeah, that's a, that's a probably a miss with uh, I think a What's thirteen that? to hit. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a miss. Yeah. All right, good try though, yeah. man. You know, uh, Ziva, you're up. All right, so Ziva is going to move up as she's moving. Is going to kind of look from Mike to Sedona and. Like, see that Mike's kind of shaking out of it, and but she just kind of gives Sedona a look, like, get it, to, get it together, um, and is going to move up right behind um, Fell and Zeno, just to kind of get a scope of the room, and is actually going to use her. She's going to downgrade to uh, use get him on Beefcake because he's the okay. one that was injured. Correct. Correct. Yes, and she's just gonna say, "Take them out one at a time. The one on the north, take him. The lab in the north, the one on the <laughs> north." <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That was round one. Round two. It's their turn. Beefcake is going. Well, let's we'll start with Francis. 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 Sorry. Uh, all right. Francis is going to take a guarded step forward, and then I need everybody 
to roll a will save. All right. All right this. Is there any possibility that I'm just outside the range? <laughs> no, that's why I took a five step forward. I think this die is cursed because I just rolled six on it three times in a row. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Uh, which gives me a 10 on that will save. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to use an inspiration on my will save. Okay. It'll be a 22 for Orin. I rolled a 19 on the die for a 25. Nice. That's it. Oh, shit. What? I did this poorly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, uh, so who f- who failed? I don't know. I, we don't know what the we DC yeah, is. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Would no y'all one roll? failed. Would you all roll? <laughs> Oren, what did you roll? 22. Okay. Zeno, what did you roll? 18. Okay. Fel, what did you roll? And- Ten. All right, Ziva. What did you roll? Eighteen. All right, Phil. You. Uh, what am I? Job liver? I'm sorry, Mike. Oh, uh, Mike, <laughs> you're de- Mike. You're definitely out of range. My bad. I didn't even see you down there. You're totally out of range. You were correct. I was. I saw the top of Sedona's tokens, and I thought that was you for a second. I apologize. A wide range. He has four. He's not getting any inspiration <laughs> for a while. Um, all right. So, Fel, uh-huh. this spell causes you to fall into a magical sleep. You're gaining the asleep condition, except normal noise won't wake you up. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're asleep for... It's going to be four minutes. Four minutes? Four Four minutes. minutes. That's ridiculous. Sleep. So wait a minute. Can we do an attempt to wake him up? He is under magical sleep. Am I like just standing there and just, or did I like fall to like asleep, like collapse onto the ground? Yeah. So the asleep condition is as follows. You are sleeping and helpless. While asleep, you take a minus 10 penalty to perception checks to notice anything. If you succeed at a perception check to notice something, despite the penalty, you automatically awaken. You are also awoken if you are slapped or wounded. An ally can wake you as a standard action. So, yes, as a standard uh, action, yeah. you can wake him up. Wake him up. I'm going to um, be like that video where the, da- the dad is slapping all the kids at the birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> um, meanwhile... Our boy Beefcake is going to, um, <laughs> all right, is going to make. This is going to go towards Oren. All right, all right. So I got to roll will save. Yeah, you got to roll will save. All right. So um, I have an ability that I got at this level. It's it has to do with uh, the themeless, you know, uh, that I took, which mm-hmm. is called certainty. So before rolling. Oh no, it's only a skill check. It's not a saving throw. Oh man. I will use my inspiration then. Okay. To get a plus three. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Natural 17 plus 13. It's a 30. Alright, so you're only going to take half damage here. What am I taking damage from? From a mind thrust. Mmm. Mmm. So that will do. Mind thrust 2d10. It's gonna be 12 points of damage, so half of that you'll take six points of damage. So, yeah, six damage. I guess you know, the grays just show him an, a quick image of Evelyn dead in his arms. And he goes, get That's out of actually, my head. yeah, it's more like they show you a quick image of them like doing dissecting you, anal probes. Oh, gross. Yeah. The, they're vivisection. Mm, I like I like mine better. I like mine better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you yeah. see him run, actually run up to the scaffolding that wraps around one of these big rings. All right, that's their turn. Orin, you're up. Wait, they both or just one? Just one ran up there. Okay. Uh. Oh God, I don't fucking know. Um. Yeah, he'll just. Take a few steps up, you know, against this wall. Mm-hmm. 
champ a new round and just fire. Like I mean, he's like 15 feet away. From yeah, this, you got a pretty solid from, shot. From uh, from what was what was the other one's name? Beefcake Francis. and uh, Francis. Francis. Francis, yeah. You're going down, Francis. He says as he <laughs> lays him out. Let's see. Oh, that's not gonna hit, man. That's a 12. Yeah, that's a miss. All right. Okay. Zeno five, you're up. Oh gosh. Okay. Huh. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it simple. Just gonna go ahead and fire on him again. Uh, okay. Let's see here. That's gonna be a 21. All right. Let me and, get that miss chance. Yep. That crack guy. Ah, okay, that is a 10 percentile. Let's see. So, yeah, that's a miss if you yeah. have 10 on the percentile. Yeah. So that, yeah, so the concealment, it kind of phases as the bullet tries to to, to enter him, or the laser, rather. <laughs> phases. Could, and could he downgrade a standard action to a, or could he, could he still slap Phil to wake him up since no, he didn't he use can't. a move action? No, because it takes a standard action to do that. So, no, he cannot do that. Mike, you're up. Okay. Uh, Mike is going... Did you going... want to move, Zeno? I'm sorry. No, I'm not going to move. Okay. All right. Mike? Uh, Mike is going to barrel forward uh, 30 feet through his ally's square. So, excuse me. Out the way. Out the way. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and I can get right here. And as he's moving, okay, I get it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> as he's moving, he's gonna draw his uh, laser cannon and uh, take a shot on Francis. Okay. Okay. It's a sixteen on the die for a twenty-four. All right, let me get the miss chance. Yeah, 68. 68, alright, that's a hit. Okay. And that'll be 2d8 plus 6. Oh, beautiful. It's an 8 and a 7. So, 15 plus 6, 21 damage. Man. That is a huge... (laughs) This laser cannon just rips through Francis. Just... I mean, she's still standing, but not looking great. Um. All right, Fell is asleep. So Ziva is up. Adam. I'm curious, like gunshots and stuff going off uh, around me. It says specifically, not, yeah, that no not sounds. woken up by no. a sound. It says specifically okay. not woken up by sound. Ziva, you're up. Ziva is going to notice that uh, Fell's just kind of like, uh, she's gonna kind of like kick him. We're like, Fell, wake up! This is no time. Fell stays asleep because uh, I not, have not been slapped. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> yes, you do because you're being a ding dong about it. So she takes yep. off her glove and slaps you with it. That's and that's oh. the rest of your turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so but, standard action wakes up Fell. And so for her move action, she's going to shift get him to uh, Francis. Okay. Let's say, good shot, Mikael. Now take this one down. You got it. All right. Round three. Back to the grays. All right. This gray that's up in the front that just took a couple big hits. Took a shot right to the face from Oren. Is going Mm. to aim his gun at you and take a full round action. On Oren. As he Watch fires. out. Two shots. Watch out. Nice. Oren hits the deck. Hits the deck. All right. Well, it looks like I'm going to need a natural 20 to make this happen. Here we go. Two. Rolling twice. Against DAC or KAC, man. All right. So 14 is my lowest against KAC. Okay. So. That's going to be K- miss. Yeah. All right, yeah, so 20, Mike. does that hit your KAC? It would if I wasn't hitting the deck. Yeah. Get it. KAC is going to be a 23. 
pistol, you see this needle or pistol go as two needles come flying off the pistol and miss you go ding ding and quiver in the ground right next to you uh, with misses on both sides there. All right, we got Beefcake on the top now. We'll shoot his needler at on Mike. It's outside his range increment, so there's gonna be a minus two to that single attack against Mike. Okay, so that will be a 22 to hit KAC. That's a miss. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> And he will use the rest of his turn to continue to move around behind this ring. And now you cannot see him. Or you don't have a line of sight on this on him. Or in Europe. You do have a line of sight on this guy right in front of you. You're laying uh, on the it, ground. I keep mixing up Pathfinder and 2E, so it's just five feet of movement to stand up. It's right? your whole move action to stand up. Whole movement to stand up. Mm -hmm. Um... Well, in that case, we're going to just shoot from the ground, I think. Okay. Full attack. All right. Full attack. Look at these D20s here. Ooh! So one is going to be a miss, I believe. I rolled a five on the die, uh, and it's so it's a ten to hit. That's going to miss, right? Yeah. Second one's a yeah, natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I got to roll a miss chance. Yes, you and do. And a confirm chance as well? Yep. Let's start with the miss chance. Okay. Yeah, let's start with the miss chance. Let's hurry. Oh, that's a big 50. All right, so it does hit. Now roll yes. to confirm. Uh, That might do it. Do I roll the same negative four? Why are you rolling a negative four? Because you're full attacking? Because I'm full attacking. Yes, you do. Okay. So it's a 15 on the die, it's a 20, dirty 20. That confirms. Nice. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Draw the card. Look at this card, card John. Yes. Yeah. This, this card is going to be the, the, the critical effect thing, the extreme. The extreme. I know it. Come on. I feel it. Analog. I feel it. All right. Uh, it'll be something weird like you can, the extreme is attack with a tentacle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. So. The extreme is extreme electricity. God. Uh, I was trying to will it into existence. All yeah. right, so kinetic. All right. Nicked an artery. I think we all know what this is. Bleed. One D6 uh, every five levels. So you is just one D6. Yeah. 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 So. All right. So you get you still get your double damage plus a d6 well, of bleed. Well, you know what? I, I mean, I have a, I have a wounding critical yeah. effect on my there weapon, so like I get to roll a, a d20, and I at the worst I get is a bleed. At best, right. I can completely then do you it. You know what oh, I'm saying? Then, yeah. Fuck so yeah. first, let me go ahead and roll my two d10 plus twelve damage, which is what it's going to be dealing. Uh, and that is a nine and an eight on the damn. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Fuck you, Francis. Damn. Is there, there, is there twenty-nine any damage. Oh yeah, that dead. dead twenty-nine and damage. Dead and dead. <laughs> Just cut so, right through yeah. his big gray brain. Holy with, with, shit! Like you're from the ground. You use your elbows to brace your shot. <laughs> that first one misses. <laughs> the second one splits him right between the eyes. And he Get falls to fucked, the Francis. ground. Fucking nice. Beautiful. Zeno, five, Beautiful. You're up. You oh know that God. one of these guys ran back up around the north corner. The other one is dead. What do you do? Beefcake still looms large. All right. So Zeno, not wasting any time, <laughs> he's going to go ahead and uh, move his 30 feet. And let's see. Any way I can. Re There's no way that I can see him from here, is there? Well, if I, I were to move uh, right here. No. <sighs> okay. Um, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and uh, downgrade a standard action and just go go ahead and move another 30 feet. Um, okay. I'm going to go right here. And that is it for me. I can't really do anything uh, else. Well, it's not entirely it for you. Oh, God. Um, I need you to roll a fortitude save. Okay. All right. I am going to uh, use another inspiration. Okay. And let me see here. What is my Whose inspiration are you using? As... 
I am using, I believe that's an Alexpiration. Let me just see if I can Alex. get that bigger. Can't quite make that <laughs> any bigger. Oh, that's, yeah, that's an Alexpiration. All right. And let's see. Fortitude six. Fortitude is a plus six. Okay. Uh, Nat fucking 20. Oh, okay. yeah. There yes. you go, There John. we go. Nice. There we go. My boy All right, is so golden. 26. Or, well, plus three, 29. All right, you're good. You're good. So full turn to get closer up there. Uh, Mike, you're up. Seeing that Fell moves up to the north, because the, uh, I don't know if we've described it for the audience, the catwalk he's on has a, like, it, it's a bend, so it has a west exit and a south stair set exit, right? Yeah, the one to the south looks like it would be pretty difficult to get to because you'd have to climb over a lot of, like, wiring and mechanics, you know, for what it's worth. It's worth fucking nothing, Adam. It's fucking garbage. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, um, Dang, bro. It's all good, man. I don't like not being able to get past stuff because of wires. Oh, oh my God. God. Okay, so... It's just going to be an athletics check or something, man. Yeah, I heard that you're you good at those. You don't understand. <laughs> you're out of here. Okay. Um... I was going to try to cut him off on the other end, but it's going to take two of my movements. If I have to do an athletic check, it's going to count as a whole fucking movement just to do the check. So, fuck, it sucks. I will say that you can pretty much get diagonally around this platform on the north side. You know, like you could do, you could essentially do that, you know. Like to the same entrance or the same stair set. Where Fell's going? Or but where Xeno's going? Yeah. So I yeah. have a quick question about the map. Those blue things, are those just lights? What blue things? There's lots the, of blue things on here. The, like... The lines on the ground? tunnel-looking things? Oh, those are the big rings. Yeah. Yeah, there's but, ramps that go... There's a ramp that goes into the northern one, or, like, towards the northern one, I should say, and one that goes away from the There's Stargates. One. Okay. Yeah, since they this is a travel lab. Yeah, I think it's the Ben travel lab myself. <laughs> so, Mike, what you gonna do? Uh, I guess in uh, see, my whole purpose was I was gonna try to have one person at each exit so he couldn't yeah. get away. Mm-hmm. But uh, since I can't do that, I guess I'm gonna <laughs> just butt in line <laughs> ahead of Xena and uh, use both of my movements to get up to. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I can get, like, right to the base of the stairs. Or, no, I can get on the stairs. There you go. Make a hole. Yeah, I make a hole, people. Uh, yeah. Is that a problem? Uh, um, I think that you'll have to get, like, right in front of the stairs. Because, I mean, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, so you can get, I guess, on that bottom square. I was saying that I don't know if you could cut that corner without going into that other space, but that's fine. You can do that. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, (laughs) Mike just, like, assesses the situation, decides not to take a big jump over the wires and maybe trip and look like a dumbass. Um, (laughs) And he just barrels forward, 60-foot sprint to Mm -hmm. the the base of the... to the the staircase. So I'm, like, 15 feet from the gray. As you get right here, I need you to roll a fortitude save. Okay. Actually, it'll be... It's right like they've here. got an aura. I was just about to say that. Or is... Well, this might be a trap. Um, okay. So, that is a 19 on the die. Mm-hmm. For, uh... Where is my stance? Uh, for a... I have plus 11. So, that'll be a 30. All right, you're fine. So you can, toughest goddamn yeah, yeah. vest in the universe. Anybody's, Anybody's ever seen. Anybody's ever seen. Yeah. All right, Phil, <laughs> you can. You you are yeah. awake, so you can join the combat. What yeah. you gonna do? Uh, I'm going to let's see, move up to where Dead Gray is, and uh, continue hacking the with the. Uh, exocortex and take a shot at the gray that's up on the catwalk 
you can't see. You can't I don't have a shot. shot All right. Play. Well, well, in that case, uh, or if that's the case, <laughs> I'm going to actually uh, not go Trademark. up there to take a shot. If I, if I don't have line of sight on him, there's no reason for me to stand out in the open. So I'm going to just go up and have Fell assist the Exocortex in hacking this computer. All right, roll another All computers. Right. All right, so that's 14 on the die, which gives me a 31. Okay, uh, so with that, you do have access to the computer panel, which you can then, uh, I would say on your next turn, use your action to assess the information, well, I mean, but you've got a successful so hack. So if the Exocortex did the hack, can Fell then access it because he's standing right there yeah because you moved i mean i'm i'm, I'm gonna say it's going to take you a full action to actually comprehend and read the information you're like looking at an entire data module's worth of information in six seconds you're not a computer yeah, fair. all right uh ziva you're up all right ziva is going to use her move action to uh scoot right up to kind of where fell is near the computer console mm -hmm. just so that she can kind of she sees where Michael is um, we've kind of talked about this before that it's a, a, a sense thing she's within range to use dispiriting taunt yeah but um, he's got a good hidden from you you know what I'm saying he's not making any noise he specifically went up there to get okay. unseen and unsensed you know? alright well then, Ziva will use the rest of her action, or her she'll downgrade to move some more. Okay. Um, she'll try and move over the wires. All right, show, plot out your course for me. So there's she. That's twenty right there. Mm-hmm. And how much she, movement do you have? Thirty. She's got thirty. I assumed it would be like. Yeah, I don't think you have enough movement to cross it right now because I would just say that's like. Require a roll plus making it difficult terrain, you know. Um, gotcha. However, I do need you to roll a fortitude save. Well, so I don't care for that uh, very much. All right. I, I really don't care for that. 13. Ooh. That's not good. The ring in front of you starts to swell with energy and it starts to pull you towards it. What? Yeah, and we'll see. Oh, no! Oh, no! What? What? No. what are you? No! What? Oh, no! Oh, it's God! The, oh, it's fuck. the magnetism no from all your pants and jewelry. <laughs> oh, my jewelry! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, uh, Ziva, we'll see you. Shit. Um... He was going to straight through a fucking portal. What plane of fire? Oh. She'll go on a plane maybe, of fire. maybe she'll come out on the other side of the bottom ring, right? Like, well, no, wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but there's a huge. <laughs> just, yeah, there's, there's something missing from that. You know? Yeah, but if so, like, this is all prototype technology, so there's like a 50% chance she gets, uh, what was it called in Harry Potter? Splint? Splint. Oh, man. Oh, fuck. This episode has been sponsored by Roll20. This is how we roll. <laughs>